co-hosts today have been messing me up all day with these headphones and all this crazy stuff, but I've enjoyed your company, gentlemen, Matt and Bill. Thank you for joining me. Oh, with good to Tongue be here. Tongue in cheek, as, as he says that. <laughs> <laughs> we are joined this uh, segment by our county commissioners, uh, President Jim Werdeker. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Why don't you well. pull that mic yeah. right, right up close to you so we can hear you nice and good. And you can even <laughs> turn it, it to towards the counter. you. All righty. How's that? There you go. I've only got a face for radio, so <laughs> turn the cameras off. <laughs> and, of course, Eddie Gokinar. Eddie, welcome. Good morning, sir. How are you guys uh, doing? How was the breakfast yesterday? Wonderful. It was. It was very good. It's always a good event to uh, to attend, right. to see old friends and make some new ones. Parks and Rec make some uh, good money? They should have, yeah. yeah. How many sure. people were there, I think roughly? I served 440 meals. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, it, and it, uh, it gives an opportunity also to say thank you to all the workers out there that make this world go around. So right. thank you. Um, Obviously, last week you had a uh, com commissioner meeting, and we'll just start off with that. You had your um, your lobbyist come in and explain uh, what she's done and the history of what, what, what she's accomplished so far. Your thoughts, um, Jim, to start with? Well, you know, it's like I said in the meeting after she spoke and gave her report, I said sometimes, you know, the, um, the decision that we made to hire them wasn't the most popular. But as the proven track record after she did her presentation, we'll, we'll show you what the Berkeley County and the citizens did benefit from. Um, there were some things that were dead in the water that she resurrected and, and got them pushed through the finish line. And, um, and Berkeley County did and will benefit from those. Right. So this decision originally was made with, uh, I think, before you got elected, right, Eddie? It was uh, last president uh, Copenhaver? Doug and Dan were uh, were instrumental in, in uh, getting that put forward. Yeah. And I believe our um, our county manager was the one who, was, who said, hey, we should probably look into this. Is that... Yeah, did Alan, Alan, did Alan, Alan kind of bring it to... Kind of brought it forth, and uh, we did the RFP, and... Um, had it submitted and we had a couple interviews and we went with the one that we thought could do us the best job. And do other counties in West Virginia have lobbying repre representation? They do. Uh, I think Wood County had one mm -hmm. or if they still do now. I haven't talked to uh, Blair Couch here lately but um, but if he's listening by chance uh, right. from Wood County he can he can text me or let me know. So. And I, I think you can have that argument whether the county decided to hire a lobbying firm, um, but uh, you know, I just think the personal attacks uh, have been a little crazy recently. Well, let me ask you this, Mike. You know, you're down there. You're, yeah. You're in the delegation that the, you know, from the Eastern Panhandle. With, Hunt, or with Summer being there, um, kind of keeping the things in front of you all the time, you all have a quite a busy schedule. That Do you see things that may have um, gotten passed over if we didn't have her? I think from being down there just the two short years, I've always had access to uh, Summer. She mm -hmm. has very easy access to the Berkeley County um, folks. We're, we're a phone call away. She doesn't really have to lobby us because we're really on, on your side, right? Right. Uh, where I think it comes in that is truly effective is they have a multitude of clients. So they have um, their fingers in a lot of pies. So they have access to a lot of people, a lot of people who may not you know, necessarily agree with Berkeley County or have Be Berkeley County's interests in, at heart, but they do represent other interests and they have access to all 100 people like they have access to us. Right. Uh, I don't have that access to the Senate. I barely know any senators if it wasn't for Craig and Jason and Patricia. Yeah, I wouldn't know any of them over there. Uh, I don't get over the Senate side. Uh, I got a little bit more of, as, as you stay down there, you get a little more, little more access. Um, but I know how hard access strategies worked for Berkeley County this last session, and I don't think we would have got impact fees without their help. And that's just my humble opinion on that. Yeah, right. I can I can tell you, Mike. Um, I had tried two years prior to get somebody to take on impact fees, and it was like a hot potato. Nobody wanted it. They were afraid of the zoning. Yeah, I said, look, it's, it's a scratch one sentence. We've been talking about this for the last 14 years, right? I mean, well, as a county. Yes, but she took this, got it to the right senator, and, and made it happen. 
that is going to pay huge dividends to this county. The, the public has asked for impact fees for a long time, and we, we told them we can't get it without zoning. You know, so then you say, okay, well, what can we do? Um, so you scratch that one sentence, now, we've, now we have impact fees. Now, we have a lot of work to do, and we're working on it uh, very rigorously right now to get the comp plan squared away, to get the ordinance squared away. We have a lot of discussions. It's not something you can just check the switch and just charge, right? You, you put a lot of work there, into this. There is, and, and to try to get it right and try to be fair, um, there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done uh, to accomplish that. I think um, as, as county commissioners, you all made the exact right choice. Um, for us being the second largest county in the state, we are close to being the furthest removed from the local in Charleston. It's not just a real quick trip there. If, if something comes up um, during a legislative session, you just can't stop what you're doing and go to Charleston, drive five hours down there to be there to be able to present. So I think having that lobbyist is key. It was a smart decision that was made. Um, and I think the what you're going to reap in rewards from having that lobbyist in Charleston is going to is going to far outweigh any negatives that may be out there. And, um, you know, I, I know there are some discussions I've looked about cost and things of that nature. Well, you're going to you're going to get what you pay for. And I think you have a, a great lobbyist that the county well, is a firm, for. too. It's not just one. Absolutely. It's absolutely. a whole firm. Yeah. And, and so I think it's money well spent. And with not having that, how many of the county commissioners could just stop because you all have regular jobs, just pull up everything and go and let everything in the county go by and not be addressed so you can be in Charleston the whole time the legislators are down. You can't yeah. do it. That's why you have that lobbyist. Smart choice. Yeah. Do you have a total of what... Um, bills or things that have happened over the last, let's say, two years that have saved the county money or earned the county money? Oh, the jail bill, without a doubt. Number number one, two years prior, the jail bill was freezed. Yeah. Uh, it was frozen at its current rate when uh, corrections uh, kind of wanted an increase, but it was frozen. And there's right now, today, there are four counties that have not paid their jail bill, uh, somewhere in the amount of uh, $10 million. But anyway, that right there alone, um, you know, kind of stopped the bleeding. Now, the, the last two years, um, with the with the change that was made, it is projected that we saved approximately three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars from the increase of what it, what it would have been per year. Per year, that's correct. So uh, that that right there alone pays the bill. Okay. So when and if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to back up a little bit. Okay. You know, everybody says, well, that's what your delegates and your senators are for, and they're partly correct. But we all know that every delegate and every senator has an agenda of what they want to see accomplished. Almost, it's not a personal agenda. They have an agenda of things that they want to see. And they're not always the things that Berkeley County wants to, to get accomplished. So, you know, even though we have a great rapport and we have some delegates and senators that work extremely hard for us and and I'm very appreciative number number right. one to you and and Mike Height I mean uh, John Hardy you know those guys are I'm building a better relationship now with uh, Chuck Hurst yeah um, so we're, we're getting there you know so but every every one of you have your own interest and your interest is not particularly Berkeley County government. And we're all in different committees, and we all have different assignments and, sure. and different roles down there to play. Yeah, so, but we, we are able to hire somebody that has our interest every day, um, and not just during the session. It's during interim, it's in between interims. And, and Mike, you know that I, I was a no vote the first two years of this thing because of the amount of money. It's a lot of money. It is. But, because every time I looked at that 250000 I saw uh, several police officers, I saw several firemen, that's what I saw. And, but this right here is going to allow us to find those other dollars to be able to hire some of the, the public safety people that we need because some of this money, like impact fee, I'll just go there. And we don't know what those numbers are yet, but 
Today, we're using county tax dollars to make payments on vehicles. Well, we'll be able to use that impact fee money to make those payments on those vehicles. So maybe then we can take some of those dollars and put them in the personnel uh, line. Makes sense. So it's kind of, you know, you can only use these impact uh, dollars for certain things. Uh, you know, we, we may end up buying a fire truck with it. I don't know. Right. Uh, so then the fire board says, well, I no longer have to pay that $850,000 for a fire truck. Now I can help with staffing. So there's, there's all kinds of angles to try to look at this thing uh, to make it work. So the, uh, the transfer fees, what does that add up to? I know that was John Hardy's bill, but I know uh, uh, Access had a, a lot to do with helping that get through. What, what, what is the, I know that, that had a lot to do with keeping our money that we're earning here from transfer fees here, correct? That is, yeah, correct. And the, then that's been accelerated to, when is it, this year? Is I it, think is it, it, is, it was a five-year plan, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, and then in the fifth year, the transfer fees would stay here. Yeah. So it's graduated to, to bring those transfer, or the property transfers, um, stamps or whatever you want to call them, to make it stay here in the county where we're not asking back for those fees from this. We're not sending to the state and then asking for it back. back. It's just yeah. staying correct. correct. And, and that's approximately five to 600000 Per year? Yes. So we're, we're starting to add up here. Um, and then I know um, there was some $25 million for uh, water um, infrastructure. Yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that was actually almost completely gone. And uh, it was able to be resurrected by, by Hunter or Summer and to um, get it before the Senate, get it in the right, right committee, and, and get it back to Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. Matt? Hey, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, it, yeah. one other thing with that $25 million, if we wouldn't have gotten it back, it could have been put on the ratepayers to have yeah. an increase to them. So, you know, the, the little things that you don't always think, well, I mean, $25 million is a lot of things, but, uh, yeah. but if you didn't get it, the little increases that would have been put on the ratepayers yeah. that we would have had to maybe address. And the taxpayer may not see that as additional money in their pocket, but it's going to be less money coming out, out of their, their pocket. pocket. Correct. I wanted to jump back into the impact fees, and uh, you were talking about the process. Do, do you kind of have a goal in line when you would like to be able to get those into place and, and a timeline for what you're working on now? I think that the, uh, the date that we have set is uh, uh, July 2025. All right. Uh, to get everything in order to start that, that process. Now, the, the exact amount, we don't have that yet, mm -hmm. uh, what an impact fee could be, because we're still addressing... Um, some of the SIFs, the uh, capacity improvement fees for the water and sewer. So there's already a, an item there that we have to look at to make sure that we don't reach across too far. So. And those type of fees would go into effect at that time, and everything that maybe started before that is, is grandfathered in, right? There's no fees Correct. That's the way I understand it, yes. Okay. It'll be when you come in to get your building permit. Mm -hmm. that's, that's when it will be assessed, you know. So, um, but... My answer was be yesterday, <laughs> uh, but but there is a process that we need to go through, right. and we've hired a firm to help us get there. Uh, this this company is known throughout the country uh, to be to do these studies and to make the best recommendations back to us on how to proceed with this. So um, they get they dig down into the demographics of of what Berkeley yeah. County is uh, and what we're trying to to mm -hmm. accomplish. So it's just not. A, a willy-nilly decision yeah, that they're going to make. Back, back room meeting with three guys going, hey, <laughs> what, what figure are you trying to come up with, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, and, you know, Jefferson County currently has it. Right, and, yeah. you know, we've reached out to them. Uh, we do have their documents. You know, we've uh, I've spoke to Steve Stolifer on numerous occasions uh, about this, and he's, he's opened up his staff to us at any time. We have questions or concerns that, you know, so they've been doing this for quite a, a while, and actually the company that did their uh, impact uh, ordinance originally is the same company. So they have experience in West Virginia as well as across the whole country. So I want to just ask how many, because a lot of people think that the county owns all the roads in the county. How many of the roads do you actually own? Zero. Zero. How much uh, control do you have over the uh, Department of Highways on, on what they do and how how fast they're working, uh, anything like that. 
zero. <laughs> so I, I, I get this asked a lot, and people keep telling me because you know, they reach out as an elective. When are you going to get Apple Harvest uh, Drive done? When are you going to? The Department of Highways does move. A different dis- pace. At a different pace. <laughs> and government moves That's a good like way to say it. molasses. <laughs> but these are all projects that are coming from the state level and matched it with federal dollars. And they're just they're based on traffic and things like that, correct? Am I, am I wrong in assuming that? Uh, no, no. I mean, whenever there's a subdivision that's gone through the Planning Commission, and, and it can uh, attest to this also, that there are impact studies done for traffic, for schools, and all that information is given to those entities. And then, you know, what they do with it, we would like to maybe start getting a report back or a, a recommendation. Um, I, I just think that um, we, we put all those items out to the developer to accomplish and he jumps through all the hoops, and after he does that, he comes in and expects to to get his project approved. Mm-hmm. Um, like again, like I said, some and those all go through the planning commission. They sure those do. are public yeah, meetings, public meetings, public hearings, uh, at different phases of that development. I mean, you have, it, it's sometimes it's difficult, and I don't know if Eddie feels this way sometimes when he oh, was yeah. on the planning commission that when you have you know longtime friends coming in and. You know, pointing a finger at you and saying, why do you do this? Why are you letting this happen? And it, it's not that we are letting it happen. It's, it, it's you know, some hundred acres of, of property that a farmer owned for many years. And all of a sudden, you know, their kids don't want to farm it anymore. And right. they decide, well, it's time to sell. Well, at that point, we don't have a say of who's going to buy it right. or what they're going to do with it. So, you know, it, it, it's sad in a way. Now, it's perfectly legal to develop a piece of property it within is. the county, and there's no way the county can stop you if you do everything According appropriately. To, and Right. And, and uh, even even with zoning, yeah. it wouldn't stop it. Right. Yeah, and uh, they're, they're following the water and sewer lines, and that's where mm-hmm. they're getting a density from. Um, you know, I would like to see additional monies go into farmland protection to entice that farmer uh, and to, to stay and getting That's from the pressure from the uh, builder or the developer that that they put their farm in farmland protection. That to me is going to be our only hope and savior. Is I I couldn't agree with you more, Eddie. I think that farmland protection program is one of the strongest uh, things that we do, and and for the Eastern Panhandle especially, it. it incentivizes the younger and i say young like 50 and and younger to maybe purchase a farm and do some small farming you you don't have to have thousands of acres to 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 be a farmer and that's what i was wondering what is the incentive for someone that you know uh, inherit a piece of property farmland they don't want to farm it but it was their there was it was their family's property they just wanted to be kept in the family what is the incentive not to not to put this out there to be sold, to be subdivided, and, and these postage stamp size homes be placed under. What's the incentive for them to keep it and not sell it? Well, I mean, it, they not can much. go through the uh, home or farmland protection. Uh, it's, it's at a much reduced rate than what a, a developer will, will give them, but it, it will give them peace of mind that, that they preserve their property, you know, forever. Uh, or I'll, what was it? I think that was a battle in the legislature a year or two ago. Forever was 25 years. Uh, <laughs> but um, that's, that's, for the, <laughs> that's for them to work out. Not me. Uh, there was, there was a, uh, a thought back when uh, farmland was, was being developed about doing, doing what was called TDRs, Transferable Development Rights, which would allow me to sell my developing rights to another developer who would want to do something more um, de- high density in, in a subdivision. But then that left my property. I, I already was paid for my developing part of it. If I would want to develop my property, I would have to go to another piece of property and buy their development rights and put it back on my property. <laughs> I think that would have been a good option to, to have back in there because you know as well as I do, if a farm was within a mile or two of a municipality, it would not be purposely used as a farm as the county or the city would grow. So that would leave that acreage there as an island that you couldn't do anything so, with unless you bought the developing rights and put back on it. So with that being said, and, and we've 
But all, that would be up to the individual, right. not, to the, not to the farmland. So we've all been through, what, two or three different, only two uh, zoning appeals in this county? Votes, um, referendums. Votes, referendums. <laughs> uh, both have failed. Uh, the county has grown. Um, there's a lot of folks who've been here that, that want us to stop growing as fast. Do you think the public's perception of zoning has changed? And not whether you're for zoning or against zoning, do you think the public would be for in this, in this day and age? I think you know, it's, how it's how it's presented. You know, I think the last document was about two inches thick. Yeah. I think, personally, that if a development or if a zoning ordinance came out that was much, much smaller, less restrictive, and grew with you as a county as you grew, that they would be more uh, able to accept it. Um, you know, that was one of the very first questions within a couple of phone calls of when I announced that I was going to run for the commission yeah. seat. Well, what's your position on zoning? I said, look, <laughs> you know, the, the county people have spoke on zoning. Yep. But in respect to that, if a, if a petition would come before us, I would vote once again to put it on the ballot. It's not a decision for Eddie Gokenauer to make. It's a decision for the people that live here to make. So to me, it's up to them. Jim, uh, your think, thoughts? Yeah, well, I think that uh, the stakeholders um, that would um, be most impacted or benefit from it would be it would be a tough decision. Right. You know. I think that's the only way we can get, and we've only got about 65 seconds or so. I think that's the only way we actually get a sales tax uh, home rule for counties is by putting it. That's just my referendum. opinion, uh, by using it as a referendum and letting the people decide. I, I think that's the only way we could convince other legislators. Well, this might be a good platform to say that. We have a plan if, if that implemented 1% uh, sales tax. Right. We have a plan what those funds would be used for. Public yeah. safety. Yeah. Um, well, first. number number one, let me say, I, I think that this commission would abolish the stormwater fee and absorb it within that one cent. Everybody hates it, including right. us. Yeah. We hate it, too. But it's that's, there. That's also not to say that we still have to maintain the integrity of other people's properties when it's being developed. Sure. So. And then public safety. That's that's yeah. it. The, the sheriff, I know, could use 15 more deputies today. The the fire chief needs more firemen, the dispatchers, uh, school resource officers. I think that we would we would help with that. So there's lots of lots of areas in public safety that we could help with that one cent, as well as quality of life programs. Absolutely. Eddie, Jim, really appreciate you coming in here. Thanks for. I having know you're expecting to see Rob, but he he he's down. Well, I hope Rob so feels better. Hope he feels, feels better. better. Bill, Matt, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. I'm going to try and get out of this without um, zapping your ears. You're listening to WRNR and TV 10. We will see you tomorrow.